Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a little bit more with mole conversions. So you guys were doing a really nice job with mole conversions earlier in the week and we're actually going to take that a little bit further. So far, what we've been doing is doing mole conversions with just atoms or elements. And it's very easy to do it with those because you don't have to do anything special with the molar mass. But sometimes, or most of the time rather, you might have to do a mole conversion with a molecule that has more than one type of atom that's bonded or just multiple atoms, period, that are bonded. And in that case, we need to calculate the molar mass for each of these elements. So we can't just look on a periodic table and look up the molar mass, but you might have to do a quick conversion. And in fact, most of the time when chemists are doing reactions, they're going to be doing mole conversions with compounds or molecules and not just, um, not just elements or atoms. So I'm going to show you quick how to calculate the molar mass for molecules and not just atoms. So most of this video is going to be me doing the notes, So, but I did want to show myself just a little bit um, for this first section here. So let's go ahead and do sample problem two. So let's go ahead and calculate the molar mass for each of these molecules that are listed here. So there's six of them. So notice how for A, we have sodium bonded to chlorine. So I have a sodium chloride, and this right here is what we call a formula unit. And the reason why it's called a formula unit is just because normally when I have metals bonded to nonmetals, we call that a formula unit rather than a molecule for reasons we're not going to get into right now. But if I wanted to know the mass of one mole of sodium chloride, all you would need to do is simply add both of these together. So what I like to do to keep my work nice and organized is I just like to make a list of both of my atoms. So notice here, I just listed sodium and chlorine because of course those are both present in the compound. So, uh, then I like to look up the molar mass for each of the elements. So sodium's molar mass is 22.99 grams per mole, and chlorine's molar mass is 35.45 grams per mole. And if you look at the formula, there is one of each type of those atoms in this, and you could tell by the subscripts right there. So because there's no subscripts, there's one of each of those. So I'm just going to multiply each of those molar masses by one. And in that case, I get the same exact numbers, 22.99 and 35.45. And then the total, of course, would be to add those up. And when you do that, you should get an answer of 58.44. And don't forget your units. So the units for this number are grams per mole. So that means one mole of sodium chloride or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, I'm just gonna write F units, of sodium chloride has a mass of 58.44 grams. This right here is your answer. 58.44. Let's try B. So B uh, is water, of course, and water more specifically is a molecule. So that's a molecule right there. It's got two different types of elements that are bonded. Let's make our list. So I have hydrogen and oxygen in this molecule. You look on a periodic table, hydrogen's mass is 1.01. .01 grams per mole, and oxygen is 16. And let's go ahead and multiply both of those molar masses by the number of each type of element that's there. So for hydrogen, notice that there are two hydrogens here in this particular molecule. So we have to multiply um, the hydrogen's molar mass by two. 
because there are two of them there. And if we look at oxygen, oxygen has a subscript of one. So I'm just going to multiply this number again by one. So essentially I get the same thing here and two times 1.01 .01 gives me 2.02. .02. Last step is to add both of these up and you should get 18.02 .02 grams per mole. So again, what does this mean? This means that one mole of water, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, mo it's a three, molecules of water has a mass of 18.02 grams. Just imagine how big your, um, your great mole project was. So you determined if you had a mole of something, how many times can you go back and forth to your destination with a mole of your thing? For example, you can go back and forth to the North Star with a mole of pugs about 56,000 times. That contains the same number of molecules of water in about 18 grams. And 18 grams is probably about two or three sips of water. So 18 grams, very small amount, huge number of molecules right there. That's why I like that great mole project so much is because hopefully it allows students to visualize everything a little bit better. And you don't have to do these for just binary molecules, which means that they just have two types of atoms. You can do these for molecules that have multiple atoms. I mean, look at this one for F, which you're going to do in a little bit about what that molar mass must be. It's got one, two, three, four, five different types of elements in there. Let's just try this one next. Potassium's molar mass is 39. Potassium's molar mass is 39.10 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16. And hydrogen is 1.01. .01. All of these, notice there's no subscripts there. So therefore, there is one of every type of these. And you don't have to do this part if there's just one. I normally like to show all the work out the first time I do this, just so you know exactly how I'm calculating all of these numbers. And of course, the last step is to add them up. And you should get an answer of 56.11 grams per mole. Let's write it out just for good measure. So one mole of potassium hydroxide, which contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is, again, a formula unit. So let's write F units. Has a mass of 56.11 grams. That's what all of that means right there. So this right here, of course, would be a conversion factor between particles to moles. And this right here would be a conversion factor between um, moles to grams or grams to moles. Pause this video and I want you to try number or letters D through F. So try D through F, pause the video, and restart it again, and I'll have the answers up here for you. So here's your answers for D and E. So D is 104.09 grams per mole. E is 98 grams per mole. And this crazy one, F, is 309.36 grams per mole. So the mass is so large for this one because if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of this and all of those are bonded together, the mass of one of these is going to be very, very large. And you can exactly calculate what that molar mass happens to be. 
This is the only new thing we're going to do with mole conversions. Rather than just looking up the molar mass for an element, you might need to calculate the molar mass, which is what you're going to see we're going to do here. So how many grams is 4.5 moles of sodium fluoride? So again, let's just refresh our memory, what we did in this last video. Let's get um, just the two conversion factors that you might have to use. And the first one is the molar mass. I don't know why I did that L capital. And molar mass tells you the number of grams per one mole. So that's the number of grams that's equal to one mole. And again, you can find this on the periodic table. Or you might need to use Avogadro's number, which says that one mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing, whether it's a molecule, a formula unit, like we said, apples, oranges, unicorns, whatever. One mole of something always contains Avogadro's number of things. Just like before, which you were getting very good at. Let's change the marker back to black here. We're always going to start off with what the problem wants us to convert. So I have 4.5 moles of sodium fluoride, NaF. Set up our crosshair. Before we do anything else, let's get a one down below as a placeholder. Whatever units up top, let's bring that down. And we can, in fact, convert this to grams in just one step. And what's the conversion factor between grams to moles? you're going to have to use the molar mass. Notice how I didn't even think to calculate the molar mass right off the bat. You're not necessarily going to need to calculate the molar mass, so don't do more work than necessary. If you don't need to do that, then by all means, do not do it. Those units of moles cancel. Let's go ahead and calculate the molar mass for sodium fluoride really quick. Let's just do that off to the side here. So I have sodium and fluorine. Sodium is 22.99, and there's only one of them, so I'm just going to leave that. Fluorine, there's also only one of them. So basically 22.99 plus 19 gives me my answer of 41.99. And again, those are in units of grams per mole. So that means that one mole of sodium fluoride has a mass of 41.99 grams. Again, at this point in your chemistry career, there's always going to be a one next to units of moles. And then we solve. So 4.5 times 41.99. Calculator gives you 188.955. However, to the correct number of significant figures, we should only have two. So I want to round that to 190. Notice that whatever unit is left up here, let's highlight this, whatever unit's left up top is going to be the unit for your answer. It's the one that was not crossed out. Let's try B. How many moles are in 98.3 grams of aluminum hydroxide? Aluminum hydroxide. Set up our crosshair. One below is a placeholder. And again, before I even do anything, let's just get these units in. Grams of aluminum hydroxide to moles. And let's just cross these units out for good measure. Again, didn't even think about the math yet. Didn't even think about the numbers. Just plugging that in. Grams to moles. So again, we don't care about the number of particles, so we're not using Avogadro's number here, but you have to use the molar mass. And we need to calculate the molar mass for aluminum hydroxide. I'm gonna do that over here just because I'm gonna have, I'll have more room than I would over here. So let's just make a little section off to the side, kind of do that so we, can keep that separated. So we have aluminum 
we have oxygen and hydrogen. Aluminum's molar mass is 26.98. I'm not going to write units here just because I'm being a little lazy and I'm writing with this pen, which I'm still getting used to. There is only one aluminum in this molecule, rather formula unit. This is in fact a formula unit. If I look at this molecule, so notice here, or formula unit, I have this three on the outside that with this parenthesis, this is almost like the distributive property. So you have three of these OH groups. So I have OH, OH, and OH again. So if I have three of those OH groups, that means that I have a total of three oxygens. Again, it's just like the distributive property in math. And 16 times three gives me 48. And in the same sense, because there's three of those OH groups, I have one, two, three hydrogens. So let's multiply hydrogen's molar mass by three. And you should get 78.01. You're not done. A lot of times people will stop there. They think that this is the answer. And it's not. I need this in order to plug it into my dimensional analysis problem. So again, let's write it out. If you get confused, write it out. One mole of aluminum hydroxide has a mass of 78.01 grams. One mole of aluminum hydroxide has a mass of 78.01 grams. Again, highlight it if you want. Let's take a different color highlighter here. One mole of aluminum hydroxide has a mass of 78.01 grams, right there. And when you solve, you're dividing, in this case, 98.3 divided by 78.01 gives you an answer of 1.26 don't forget units, moles of aluminum, hydroxide. Let's try C. So how many formula units of beryllium iodide are in 0 0.02 moles of beryllium iodide? Remember, a formula unit, we're just being specific, a formula unit's a type of particle. So there's nothing different about what you've been doing here. It's just a type of particle. 0 0.02 moles of beryllium iodide. Let's plug that number in there. We have moles of beryllium iodide on the bottom, and that's because these units will cancel right there. And whatever unit we want to convert to is gonna go on the top. So in this case, we are converting to the formula unit which again is a type of particle. You do not need to calculate the molar mass for beryllium iodide, and that's because you're not being asked to go to the mass of this. You want to know how many individual formula units are in this. Don't do more work for yourself. If a mole, if you ha have the number of moles and you wanna know how many particles, all you need to use is Avogadro's number. So again, don't, calculate the molar mass right off the bat just because you think you have to do it because you don't always have to. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Make sure you plug those numbers in parentheses to get a final answer of, now we do have a big round here because I only have one sig fig here. One times 10 to the 22nd formula units. Of BEI2, just like that. D and E are two steppers. So I'll do E with you, and then I'm going to have you pause the video again and try E. So let's just start off with this one. How many molecules of carbon dioxide are in 409.87 grams? 409.87 grams. I'm not going to write CO2 out here. Let's just get this whole thing. One down below. First things first, whatever units up top, let's get it on the bottom. 
and you if you're not in moles you have to convert to moles because remember i don't have a relationship to go directly from the number of grams to the number of particles instead you always have to convert moles to moles and you might say well wait a minute the number of grams is equal to avogadro's number Yes, but in chemistry, it doesn't always work that way. You won't always have a number one next to moles because we can do this within reactions and we call that stoichiometry. So if you sign up for Chem 2 or AP Chemistry, we'll do a lot of stoichiometry. So always convert to moles. So here we'll have to use the molar mass. So I have one carbon atom. So let's make our little list, 12.01 times one gives me 12.01. This is gonna be a little tricky here. Um, and I have two oxygens. 16 times two is 32. Put the answer here. 12.01 plus 32 gives me an answer of 44.01 grams per mole. So one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44.01 grams. Notice how the units of grams now cancel. Now that I'm in moles, let's convert moles to molecules. Moles of CO2 to molecules. And it's really stupid. The abbreviation for mole literally just chops the E off. There is no abbreviation for molecules. I highly recommend writing this out because if you don't, you, you might start to get moles and molecules and meters and micrograms and all of these things confused. So write out molecules. And one mole of anything contains Avogadro's number of things. So these units cancel again. When you solve this, make sure you use the parentheses, especially around Avogadro's number. Answer is, I'm in around to three significant figures because Avogadro's number does only have three sig figs there. So my answer is 1.86 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of CO2. So pause this video, you try E. E looks scary, but the only thing that makes it look scary is that you need to calculate a pretty intense molar mass, but I have faith, you can do it. Pause the video, try to do this one on your own, check back for the answer. So the answer for this one is 35.1 grams of magnesium phosphate. If you did not get that, just double check the molar mass. So notice that everything is broken down. So the three magnesiums should have a molar mass of 72. Just check each one of those individual numbers, then check the total molar mass. That's why it's so important to write your work down is because then you can pinpoint exactly where you made your mistake, as opposed to if you don't have your work, it's very difficult to determine where the mistake is. So always write everything out. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Of course, we will do lots of practice with this in class because this is such a crucial skill for chemists to know how to do. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a great night. Bye.